Okay, so let's get into what this definition is really talking about, and then we'll use it in a couple of problems. Okay, so here's visually like what this definition is saying. It's like, okay, uh, here's the C value. Uh, so this is what X is approaching, and then here is the L, the limit value. So it's saying that for any epsilon you pick, so the epsilon is going to go with the, the limit value. It's, it's really being added and subtracted along the y's. So if you pick an epsilon, so any value for epsilon, it's like 1, 2, 5, 100, or whatever. Epsilon is like telling you, like, okay, well, you can be within that margin of, like, error, say. So epsilon would go up and down. So it kind of creates this band around L. So kind of over like this. So it's saying that no matter what epsilon you choose, there's going to be a corresponding delta that would create a similar band around the C values. So that if you, ch whatever delta you pick, that would line up with your corresponding epsilon. <clears throat> Okay, so you can kind of read through that. That's kind of basically what it just said. Um, so it's not actually that complicated to work with. It looks really scary. And I remember thinking the same thing when I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, now they're throwing in a bunch of other Greek stuff. And like, there's no number in there. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, what do we do? Um, but we're going to take the limit or the, uh, the definition and we're going to work with just the two absolute value things in there. We're going to kind of separate them out. We're going to work with this one and we're going to work with this one. Your goal is to get these two inequalities to, to match up. And once you do, you can establish a connection or a link between delta and epsilon. Because once these guys are the same then we can equate whatever this is and whatever this is. Like, they would have to be equal. So let's see exactly how to do that. And I know it's a little scary. Don't panic. You'll be just fine. And FYI, most students, um, when they get to this, as long as they know what to do, they can usually do it. So on an exam or a quiz, for questions like these, these are not commonly missed questions. Like most people can, can figure this out and can actually do it. All right, example three, using the given limits, find a delta. So we're gonna find a value for the delta such that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than 0.01 whenever absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. So we've chosen an epsilon already so now we're going to find a delta that's going to go with it. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I'm actually going to do part B. Uh, part A, you can look at it, um, but just for times, we're going to look at part B. So you're going to set up the two absolute values. You're going to set up the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, and then you're also going to set up and work with the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And you're going to start plugging as much stuff in as you can. So on the, your first inequality here, the only thing you know is the c. Oops, this, sorry, the c. That's what x is approaching. So the only thing on this one that you can plug in is the 1. You, you don't know what X is, you don't know delta, so that's all you can do. Over here, on this one, the second inequality we set up, we do know a lot. We know the function, that's the three X plus two, and you know the limit value, that's the five. And in this case, you also know Epsilon, that's the point of 0.01. So we've set up and plugged in as much stuff as we can. Your first inequality, you can't do anything else. That's just done. It's this one over here that we can start doing things. We can start to simplify and combine like terms. And 
And remember your goal is to get these two absolute values to match. And right now they don't. So to get it to match, let's pull a three out. And you not only want them to match, but that has to be the only thing over there. So if you pull something out, you're gonna end up dividing it over. So divide it by three. And then simplify this down. Like you guys are in calculus, don't leave fractions and decimals stuck into each other. Either write it as a decimal or write it as a fraction, but not a combo. So as a decimal, that would be uh, 0 0.003, or as a fraction, that would be 1 over 300. So if you leave it like this, I'll take, I'll ding you a point for sure. So make sure you simplify your fractions down. All right. So if you look at it, that matches that. So once they match, now you know what delta equals. Delta is going to equal whatever you ended up with over here. And you can use either one. I don't care. Pick your favorite. Personally, I like fractions better than decimals, but that's just me. So delta is going to equal 1 over 300. And that is pretty much the name of the game. <clears throat> so in example 4, use the definition to prove the given limit. Well, it's almost exactly the same thing as what we just did up here. You're gonna set up both inequalities You're gonna plug in as much stuff and then you're gonna to try to get them to match. So on the first one, the only thing to do is plug in the four for C and that's it. It's the second one that there's gonna be more action. So your function is two X minus one. Your limit value is seven. And start playing with this and get it to match that X minus four. So combine like terms, uh, pull out the two. Divide by two. And there you go. So now they match up. You have an X, absolute value of X minus four and another one right here. So now you are ready to link delta and whatever this is. In the previous example, it was an actual number, but in this case, it's not. Now it's more general. So you say thus, delta equals epsilon over two. So once you figure out what the delta is in terms of epsilon, then you're gonna actually use it. So this choice of delta, or the, what we found delta uh, to equal, you know, this works because if you start using the definition, absolute value of x minus four is less than delta, well, what did we say delta was? So it was epsilon over two. So when we have this, uh, that implies that, start working with this and kind of working our way again, the function minus the limit value. So we already played with it, so we know it's gonna get down to here. Two times the absolute value of x minus four well, that's less than two, and the absolute value, that was the delta, right? So absolute value of x minus four, that was less than delta. So if it's two times the absolute value of x minus four, that has to be less than two delta. Well, what did we say delta was? Epsilon over two. 
and two times epsilon over two, that's usually just epsilon. So you figured out the connection between delta and epsilon, and then you kind of plugged them back in and said, yep, it, it works. So you verified it. You found the relationship, and then you showed that you still, when you did this, you still ended up with that single epsilon at the end. Okay, so it is gonna take a little bit of practice, not gonna lie. Uh, so just give the problems a shot. Um, just try them out. They're not usually gonna be more complicated than, than this. We're not gonna give you like too many crazy functions. Probably no trig in there. Um, so just give them a shot. Uh, email me if you have questions, uh, and I'll help you out as much as I can. If you do email me your question, like either get real specific as to which question or which problem you're looking at from the book. Uh, you can even take a picture of what you're working with. Um, just don't say, hey, uh, I don't get why the answer was four. You're like, well, the answer to what? Um, so yeah, email me and uh, good luck. Hope you have fun trying these out.